Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 18 of the Lead Code Daily Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's problem. Uh, Trying to get free coins. Today's problem is 263, ugly number. Um, in my mind, there are no such thing as ugly numbers. They're all pretty under, you know, certain base. I got nothing. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, today's an easy problem. I apparently haven't solved this yet. I don't have to think, so I, this is a new problem for me, I suppose. But since, since this is easy, and even though it is 10.50, hence the glasses, 10.50 uh, p.m., I am going to do an extra one because I'm feeling a little bit, um, I don't know, I should probably go to sleep a little bit earlier. But uh, I've been trying to track my sleep a little bit better but in any case, all right, we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> uh, but what I mean to say, though, is that I'm going to do an, uh, a bonus question after this in case you want an additional challenge. So let's kind of see what this problem is all about. 263, ugly number. It's a positive integer whose prime factors are 2, 3, and 5. So basically, it means that it's 2 to the x times 3 to the y times 5 to the z, right? So that means that if you have any other factors that are prime, then there's no go. So I mean, I think... This is pretty straightforward. Um, so it's well, it's going one. We basically do not that. Um, divided by two. Mm, well, and and it, it, mod two is equal to zero. So I guess, yeah. I I guess we don't need this. Well, I guess it could be zero. Right? Can it be zero? Oh, it could be negative actually. So that's a little bit. Hmm. Lucky look, we look at constraints because I actually didn't think about that. So the n over one is not going to be cool, but uh, but yeah, but I mean we could still do it. It's just that if n is less than zero, n is equal to negative n, right? I mean I don't. I guess n could be zero. Hmm. Huh. Never thought about it. I guess zero. Cause hmm. So the thing that I'm just kind of having a, a fun thought about is about um. And you could also just factor this. You don't have to do it this way. This is specific to the problem. If you factor this, and then you could just count the uh, things. But yeah. Um, but what I was going to say is that it's f funny because technically, if you want to do it that way, um, technically, like I'm curious what the answer is for is one one is an input, but zero because. It's fact. You don't really think about factorization when it comes to zero or even negative numbers, I guess, to some degree. But uh, but yeah. And here you can see that I have three while loops, and maybe we can do something like this instead. For x is in two, three, five, and then you know we just do 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 do, and this should be good. And maybe slightly shorter, not that much shorter. But I don't know if we need to do something funky for this, but it's it's fine. I don't know. Let's give us a minute. Maybe I made a silly mistake because this is a very weird problem. Oh, huh. Oh, because of negative one. I did. I think that was just my misunderstanding of this problem, and because. Okay. I mean. I guess technically that makes sense. All right, fine. Uh, then I don't need this. I wasn't. I guess I should have checked this, but um, my understanding now of the interpretation is that the negative. Maybe that's why they're also downwards. Because when you talk about factorization, you don't really necessarily go about negative one or negative numbers in general. I think I just. Meh. Um, I mean, I special case it because I thought that's how they wanted it, but I guess technically negative one is in. Uh, two, three, or five, but then you could also say that if n is one, um, it's, it's very awkward, I don't know. They kind of made this problem like unnecessary then, you know, like, the so the reason I say that isn't because I got it wrong and it bitter, uh, though maybe there's some of that if you want to believe that, but it's just that like, I know that this is an easy problem and probably I wouldn't use this as an interview question anyway. But if I'm using this as an interview question, then I'm asking myself, okay, what I'm trying to what am I testing? Um, what am I trying to learn about the candidate, right? Like what do they you know, and maybe it's you know, maybe I would like them to ask like, oh, what if there's a negative number? What if it's zero? Stuff like that. But that is different from implementation and kind of, you know, and and this is something that I might ask 
in person, right? Like if it was an actual interview as an interviewee, I'd be like, oh, if you have negative numbers, you know, um, you know, instead of kind of assuming, which I did, uh, or zero, I would be like, hey, what do you do with zero? But you'd have negative numbers, right? And then maybe we could talk it through. I don't know if that counts as a hint, because this is a really weird, specific, like you have to interpret the statement. It isn't really, you know, in real life, you, you can interpret statements, from, from statements together if you're interviewing, right? And kind of make sure that you're all both understanding and on the same page. But here, yeah, so I don't feel bad about that one. But then the, the problem with this problem, if I was the interviewer, is that like, what am I trying to get with testing them for zero and negative numbers, right? Is it a special case, I guess? I don't know. Like, does it really teach, like, what am I learning about a candidate? I don't know. Maybe that they care for a little bit, but I don't even think that's necessarily true. It's just like a very awkward experience. So yeah. Anyway, that's all I have for this one. Um, if you want to know about the complexity, I'll give you five seconds to kind of figure it out. Or you could just press the pause button and figure it out now. Uh, all right. Let's say you are plus now, then the, the uh, complexity, and if you've been kind of watching me the last couple of days, um, it's something that I focus on, uh, especially when input is a number, meaning that the input is number of bits, right? And the number of bits as a result, well, how many operations do we do for every number of bits? Well, in this case, you are going to basically divide it by two or three or five um, every every iteration. So what that means is that this is going to be linear time, linear time, right? This is linear time because at worst you divide it by five every time, and that's going to be, you know, log. It's going to be a constant times log. Or you know, you could say it as this is log base five of n, where n is the number. And of course, that is just a constant of log base two of n. So, you know, that's a binary, or, and that is, of course, the linear in the number of bits, right? So that's going to be linear time. All right. I hope everyone gets that because I feel like that's the number one thing that everyone kind of messes up, or, or not messes up, depends on how you want to phrase it, but everyone kind of is very imprecise about the complexity analysis. And, you know, I bet you if you look at the discussion, some of these will just be log n, maybe. Let's kind of take a quick look. Um, Okay, the discussion doesn't actually just tell the answer. Uh, oh, solutions, maybe. Yeah, and most of these will be... Okay, well, I guess they count as all of one. Maybe that's also another way of saying it. Uh, but yeah, you could see log n in a lot of places, or square root of n even. Hmm, what is the square root of n? Oh, that's the factorization one, I suppose. Um, so yeah, but all these are actually log n, right? So uh, yeah, uh, this is actually linear, is what I wanted to say. Anyway, that's all I have for this one. I don't mean to call out people that, who submitted a submission or, or submitted a solution because, you know, they're trying their best and they're learning. But I'm just pointing something that I always kind of, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, yeah, just kind of, you know, about, uh, to be precise about communication and language. And, and this is what people mean by the size of the input, right? Um, anyway, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Stay good, stay healthy to good mental health. Remember, I'm going to do one more today, so I'll see you later. Bye-bye.